Hello YouTube, I am Pinstar, and this is the third video in my strategy and tactics series for the crossroad builds in the game of Banished. Um, in, in this video, I will be showing you the last couple of buildings that we're going to be doing in, in so much we'd be calling this a specific build. Once we uh, finish this third part, the number of variables in any given map uh, will be too great to really recommend a specific building after this. But we're going to be finishing off with a nice strong build and get ourselves up a trade a trading post, a market, and a few other good stuff. Um, also, I uh, wanted to point out a, uh, uh, or rather, uh, a YouTube commenter named Sibes TV. Uh, pointed out that I have a little bit of an elite tweak that could be done to my original um, Crossroads build. In my first video, I told you that it really didn't matter which side of the Crossroads you placed your hunting cabin and forester lodge, since the uh, gathering hut was the center of the universe for it. Uh, Sibes uh, did make a very good point that if we move the forester lodge uh, to be on the same side of the crossroads as the gatherer's hut, the range of forest, uh, the, rather the range of trees that it produces would better overlap the gathering hut and therefore slightly boost the production of the gatherer's hut, whereas the uh, hunting cabin is not quite as contingent on tree uh, coverage, so it being left a little bit out of the forester's hut range would not uh, mind as much. So um, good uh, good point out there uh, for, uh, for you, Sibes. Uh, so I just wanted to mention that and give you credit. And that goes for any of you else. If you find uh, something else that uh, either I did incorrectly or you think uh, would be more logical to try something else, please leave me feedback in the comments. My, the whole point of these series is not necessarily stating that I somehow know the perfect thing to do in the game, but is to give you an, uh, the way I do things and definitely invite um, debate and uh, discussion on you know, variations of uh, how, uh, how things might be done. So please, more, th more comments like that. I definitely appreciate them. Okay, so let's get ourselves unpaused here and get started. So we've got our five laborers uh, toiling away at clearing the uh, forest here. Let me just make sure everything is marked to be cleared. Aha, a couple stray pieces of stone. Make sure there's no stray pieces of iron. That, all right, those are outside the circle, outside the circle, good. Let me make sure, Ooh, a couple, couple of rocks hiding under there. I uh, just want to give our foresters maximum coverage. As you can see, now there's some big gaping holes in the forest, but those were just formerly rocks, and those will, uh, those will soon be trees once I get uh, people back in place as foresters. All right. And uh, we have our, um, in our last video, we got ourselves our blacksmith, our tailor, and also our schoolhouse, and our uh, firstborn uh, citizen, or firstborn child uh, citizen in the town is about to age up and join the ranks of our students. Um, so actually, I don't need to track uh, him anymore. He serves his purpose. He was just a countdown to make sure I got my schoolhouse built in time. All right, so let's uh, let's see here. I think people are idling pretty soon, so let's start the next phase. So now that we largely have the forest cleared of stone and iron, we can put our laborers back in place as our foresters. Uh, our food is still on the uptick, so we don't need to worry about uh, putting uh, more gatherers in place yet. We can do that very easily and very reactively um, once we start seeing a solid decline in food. Um, and I mean, you know, once we get down to like 1500 or so, if uh, if we can, I, if I can see it's slowly being, being whittled away, I can throw a gatherer or two on there to uh, bring our food consumption balance back into par. Okay, so what are we going to do? Uh, we can't really go crazy with buildings that uh, require a lot of workers because, I mean, with those in place, we only have two laborers. And the only reason we have two laborers is because we uh, pulled two of them off of the gatherers, and we still have a blacksmith and a tailor that will occasionally need part-time workers. So we can't go too nuts in terms of, um, you know, building, you know, a quarry or a mine right now that needs lots of workers. But that's okay, because 
the uh, since we have a lot of time on our hands, but we need buildings that don't need a lot of workers, that brings to mind two very powerful structures the trading post and the market. Both require a lot of resources, but effectively only really one worker, at least at this stage in our city. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get working on that while our uh, forest gets fleshed out here. So I'm going to start with the trading post, mainly because the sooner that gets finished, the sooner our uh, boats will start coming. So that means the more uh, traders we'll be getting, and also the sooner we'll be getting our first trader. And what that first trader be, uh, brings us will highly uh, influence what um, uh, what direction our city is going to grow in. Uh, some early uh, livestock, especially sheep, or some early seeds can definitely help us go to a more agrarian economy. Whereas if they bring us, um, well, not seeds and not livestock, um, they um, we might want to uh, get ourselves another forest hub going to keep us growing in the early to mid uh, life cycle of our city. As far as placement for the uh, for the trading post, I like it right here. Um, that way it's pretty close to everything else, um, and we're going to be needing a lot of stone, and this is a lot of stone in the way, so we'll place it right here. And because I like setting my road networks up nice and early, just to frame things out, bring you down here, bring you down here. That should be good enough for now. I'll place the rest of the road network later. All right, all right. Um, so let's get a builder in place and leave one person as a laborer. Now, because of uh, of the amount of resources needed for these, um, the uh, these this is going to take a while to build. But like I said, we uh, we're going to be having our first student soon. It's going to take them a while to graduate. So. Um, slowly toiling away here is probably going to be the best use of our time in terms of keeping our, our very small labor force in, in place. The other thing we can do to speed up is once the uh, foresters have completely blanketed this area, then we can, uh, we can have them actually start cutting things uh, once the trees grow in. But to give the, tree, the, the newly planted trees a chance to grow in, um, we can pull them back off of being a forester and uh, have them help out with uh, building the trading post and the market. So we'll, uh, we'll get these. Our, our goal here is to get both of those built and finished before our first student graduates. That way uh, things will be nice and ready for them and uh, we'll have our economy going up and like I said we'll have a trader coming soon. So I'm going to be running the rest of this uh, pretty much at times 10 because like I said this, this phase of the build is, in, is pretty much killing time. Um, all right so all right you've got that going so let me pop you back to a laborer and yep you're just taking stuff off of there i'm going to wait for him to clear it before i pause it because there was some stone in there and we want more stone because we need more stone um, and we're going to need more wood too but luckily we can bring it up here or clear cut it from up here all right pausing that let's get you guys grabbing some stone first and we'll just grab that because we're going to need more stone from the market anyway, so we might as well grab a little bit more than we need. Hmm, that's a lot of people going for that. That's more than two laborers. Who is idle? Are you guys idle? Nope, you're, uh, you're gathering fruit. Are you guys idle? Yes. Oh, okay. They must have already uh, they must have already planted the whole place. All right, that works for me. That means I can pull them out of there and make them official laborers. That way they don't randomly decide to pop down here. So yeah, that went pretty quickly. Um, and which means this effort's going to go pretty quickly too. All right, we've got more than enough stone. We are going to need more wood though. So let's cut a nice big swath here because again we're going to be needing it for our market as well which is that anyway in terms of all right yeah we're going to need the fair amount of stone not as much wood thankfully and yeah we're currently swimming in iron so we can we can take our time picking up this iron 
Uh, speaking of iron, tools are getting a little low, so let me toss a blacksmith on there just to get it up above 20 or so, and good. We have an educated worker, so that will be nice. Stop it. Stop it. There we go. It's like whack-a-mole. All right, so they are grabbing the last of that stone. They should be, yep, hitting the trees pretty soon. And that way, uh, yeah, that way they don't fight too hard, harshly over that uh, that area with the uh, woodcutter. All right, more trees, more trees. If I uh, if I could put it faster than times ten, I would put it faster than times ten. But this should go pretty quickly anyway. And actually, since we are in the planning stages here, I'm going to go ahead and place a market down here. Now, as far as market placement goes, um, I could put it here. Uh, and that would... how is that on my coverage? Right here. Does that actually cover my houses down here or not? They don't, but that's okay. Uh, I don't mind not having the market touch the houses down here, mainly because the storage barn down there, just by its location and placement, um, will have five different types of food and plenty of firewood available. So the people in that little uh, forest hub can access basically what they need from a market uh, from their local storage barn and stockpile. So they don't need to be in the radius of the market. So place the market there, but I want that trading post done first. So we'll just pause you. Uh, plenty of wood. Okay, we can unpause this now. They'll finish up with the trees first before they work on this. And we can also assign builders to let them lend them that to that. And see, once again, this is exactly the reason why I like getting the materials first, because they're bringing the logs there in full loads, as much as they can carry. And we got guys working on the road here, so that'll make it go even faster. Probably need to cut down another swath of trees uh, when we do our market, but at least we'll have a working supply for our woodcutter to keep happy. Um, which reminds me, you are going to get a new fuel limit. So 200 is good to start with at the beginning of the game. I'm going to move you to 700. Why 700 specifically? Here's the reason. For 625 firewood, you can purchase one unit of seeds. That's 2,500 trading power. You can also purchase uh, three cows, two sheep, or I believe six chickens. Uh, either way, it's enough of a working start to uh, jumpstart your uh, efforts to get up a flock going. Um, so it's very useful in that regard to um, have that much ready on hand and sitting in port. So by the time the trading post is done here, and well, actually maybe not quite by that time, but we're going to start working on um, getting our firewood up to 700 so that way I can grab 625, bring it to the trading post, and have a little bit left over so people don't panic for firewood and uh, go from there. Um, and that way we'll have... A, universal trading supplies ready to go. Any, um, all of the different merchant types, the seed merchants, the livestock merchants, the food merchants, the resource merchants, all of them accept firewood, all of them. Whereas certain merchants will not accept certain things. A food merchant might accept my venison, but they, they don't want my iron or they don't want uh, my tools or, or some, something of the, that effect. Um, but firewood is the universal trading thing and probably the best thing you can be trading early in the game because it's so easy to get. I mean, it's just logs and one worker to process them and you don't need to buy or build extra woodcutters to make that happen effectively. Okay, so let's unpause here. Um, trading post is done and our blacksmith has done more than enough. So let's get our uh, trader in here. Uh, now one question I do have, and I do not know the answer to this, so if someone can drop me a comment, I would uh, most 
greatly appreciate it is whether or not you need to have a single trader employed in order to get traders coming to your uh, trading post. That's un I'm unsure of that, but just to be on the safe side, I will do that. And since they help out when they idle anyway, um, then I, you know, it's uh, I don't mind keeping them employed in there. That way, we make sure we have coverage. Okay, our food is holding steady. Uh, well, not qu yeah, yeah, pretty much holding steady. What I might do, I'm, I'm going to be proactive here and toss in a gatherer. And oh, right, we're having people become students. Seven students already. Uh, normally the first wave is six, uh, but I think the first couple ones I didn't uh, point out. So this is actually a couple of students from the second wave. Okay, we should have enough of everything now. Yep, so let's uh, get working on that market, people. And we'll let them cut down the rest of these trees, um, just because we're going to need all that, all those extra logs, since our woodcutter is not going to be, uh, not going to be stopping for a while. As soon as this uh, this extra growth starts, uh, gets another year of maturity under it, um, I will uh, put our foresters back in place and tell them to start chopping. So that way, I'll have a regular supply and regular income of wood from from this forest finally. Uh, that will be able to directly feed the woodcutters. And also new building things, so I don't have to keep uh, clear-cutting everything in, in sight to uh, do that. You know, clear-cutting is great for a while, uh, but you don't want to constantly do that, because every time you clear-cut, you're going to have to be cutting down stuff from further and further away, and it becomes less and less efficient to do that. Okay. Market is going in place. Just got to get the iron in there. Good way to bleed off some of my excess iron supplies. Yep, logs are, supply of logs are low. These, uh, this part should still be marked, I, I believe. Yep, they're still marked. So after they finish the market, they will go back and start. Well, actually, they're going to start doing that anyway. All right. Oop. What do we have here? Riley has become an adult and is working as a laborer, but Riley was not my oldest. Riley, Riley, Riley. Let's find you, Riley. Just make sure you got properly educated. Riley, Riley, Riley. Nope. Riley. Hello? Yeah, see, our, our, this guy is 17 years old and he's still a student. He's uh, been held back a couple of grades there. All right. Oh, there's Riley. All right. Um, okay, so we are actually going to be, I know we have a lot of uh, grown-up children and uh, in, that are in need of uh, getting their own places and starting their own families. I'm also going to be covering that in this building. I have a very, very specific way that I like to set up my buildings uh, to, or my housing to, to workplace ratio to ensure a healthy but not too excessive growth of housing for people. And I will go into great depth of that. As soon as our market is finished, and as soon as we get a couple more graduates, I will uh, lay down my system uh, for all to see. Okay, we've got our market up, so let's get our vendor in place, right there, and we're going to need a tailor just to uh, help with the coats, and let's get more foresters, uh, or put foresters back in place. All right, so these, um, you know what, I'd like being where we are, so let's tell them to cut because we need the wood, and I'm tired of clear-cutting. You guys can finish clear-cutting this area that I have marked, but uh, we uh, I wouldn't mind starting to take trees from here. All right. All right. All right, so you guys are going to town on the trees here. 
And as soon as we get a few more graduates, we will be uh, we'll be good. Another wave of babies. All right, let's see here. How we doing? We are doing fine. All right, another graduate, another laborer. Good. We'll. Uh, what I'm looking uh, for them to do here is. I want to build up a little bit of a supply before I start showing you some of my techniques here, uh, just so we can have that going. Uh, I'm good with just leaving our foresters at three. That's enough. Our gatherers at three are, are enough. Um, so what I'm, I'm going to wait for two more laborers, and then I will go into my the way I like to expand uh, my population going forward. All right, another laborer, and. Another laborer. All right. Oh, two more laborers. Perfect. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. So here is how I like to grow in the longer term. So in the shorter term during the build order, you just sort of do it strategically. But in the longer term, you want to um, have, make sure that you're always keeping up with your housing, but also placing them in logical places. So what I'm going to build next is um, going to be another source of food, because we're still nibbling away at this. And another gatherer, we could probably throw it on there. Actually, I probably will. Um, but it's still not going to be enough. We need another source of food because uh, of all these babies getting born. So my next source of food that I like to tap into, since I'm already by the river, is fishing. Now, I would love to put a dock right here, but I already tested this out. There's no way to fit a dock here. It's too mountainous. So the next best place to fit a dock is here. The reason why I uh, uh, want to do it up here, actually it's right up here, is you want to get as much water in the circle uh, as possible. The more water, the more fish, uh, the better production. So we will build our fishing dock out here, but we're not going to do our fishing dock just yet. Uh, let's get roads out to it. That, that we do want. And we'll uh, build out to here. Like that. And sweep it across the front. Now, where is that? All right, we want to make sure the houses by here are going to be in the market radius. So I'm going to build a storage barn up here just so we can have a quick drop off place for the fish like there. And then here is how I like to to do it. So whenever I have two new workers, it, oh, well, actually let me take a step back. Three laborers is my magic number. And here's why three. One is from this point forward, I will never have zero laborers. I will always keep one in there. And the reason why I'm going to keep one in there is because of the teacher. Whenever a person dies, they will automatically pull a laborer from the pool. And that's fine for other professions, um, but it's especially important for the teacher. The reason is, is if the teacher dies and there is nobody to replace them, all of the current students will instantly quote unquote graduate, but will be uneducated. They will instantly, you'll have a wave of unskilled laborers and all the years they spent in school will be wasted. So you always want to have one laborer sitting there as a laborer. So what I normally do is I wait till I get three laborers and here's what I do. So let's say I want to build a, a new profession building here. So fishing dock. A fishing dock, once it's fully built, is going to employ four people. Uh, but I'm just going to employ two people there to start with. So before I even build a fishing dock, what I need to do is to need to build the housing for the people that are going to eventually be uh, employed there. So I will build this wooden house. And those two would-be fishermen are going to start their lives out as two builders. Now, I'm also going to have them build the, the storage barn before I touch that because they might as well do that. And the reason why I'm built, having them build these things up front is that might as well have them be builders and, and make their own stuff and then finish off the fishing, um, the fishing dock and then become fishermen. So that way, you know, you get a little bit of, of, of extra people to be builders temporarily, and then you get you put them to work exactly in what you cleared the area for. So it makes it just sort of a, a little conveyor belt for people in terms of, you know, build, you basically you build your own house, 
and then you build your own workplace and then you get to work there is, is essentially how this whole thing works. And then when, uh, when we get another two set of laborers, uh, I will just have them build their house and then just add them to the fishing dock since we don't need to build another whole building for them to be employed. Yes, yes, reserve of logs is low. I got my foresters on it, we're fine. And if you keep that ratio up for one house for every two jobs, you'll be in good shape. And that actually means we are a little bit short on houses right now. Um, we need one house for these two. We have one house here, which will cover the uh, schoolhouse plus the one permanent laborer, but we're gonna need another one house to cover these two, which will eventually become full time. So we're gonna be doing some house building pretty soon here, but I wanna get that fishing dock up first, just so we have a little extra food income. All right, storage barn is ready. Got more people going on here. We are depleting the logs, and but slowly building up our excess firewood. It's not always a, a straight shot to uh, um, to to get to 700. Uh, if you have, if you're lucky and you get some really really mild winters and people don't need to heat their homes quite so often, then they uh, then you might be able to uh, catch a break and just get extra firework uh, fireworks firewood. But uh, it's fine if they start using it up. Uh, eventually, you're, you're, uh, at, at this size of the city, your uh, woodcutter will be able to keep up and keep you in an excess, so you'll have something to trade for. Yeah, I know, you guys are scraping the bottom of the barrel for, for the logs. That will even itself out eventually. Do I still, I still have that tailor. You're, uh, you don't need to be a tailor. You need to be a forester. I need more logs. All right. Oh, and when, if we get more, uh, more laborers coming in place uh, while we're waiting for the others, we'll just throw them onto the builders uh, if they can help out there. Might as well help their buddies get housed and, and uh, whatnot first. So we'll get that storage barn, should be finishing soon. The house should be finishing soon. And as soon as we get one more labor, I'll start work on another house. More students and um, yeah, and that's the great that's the great part about this. All these incoming workers are gonna be all educated. So regardless of where they work, they're gonna be much more effective. And that's the other reason why I like building the schoolhouse before a fishing dock. The fishing dock is one profession that really kind of sucks if um, if you got a couple of unskilled workers on there, but if you have a couple of skilled workers working the fishing dock, much more efficient. Okay, so that house is built which means we can pull people out of their builders. Um, no, no, we can't. We need to actually build this <laughs> fishing dock proper. There we are. And you know what? I'll have that laborer start that uh, extra house over here just so we can get a jump on it. All right. All right. So even with uh, even with four foresters going at it, our our forest is nice and thick. So that means even though we're cutting trees down, our gatherers' uh, harvest rate is not going to suffer too badly. And of course, because we have plants still on, they'll go ahead and start replanting the areas they cut down just as soon as they do cut them down. So it um, that's this is that's the whole reason why we took the time to thicken up our forest, clear out all the stones get all the stuff planted and give it time to grow before we started harvesting it, is that way we can have both, both ends of the, of the spectrum here. We can get a good healthy log income and we can get a good healthy harvester uh, or gatherer's hut income. Okay, our, uh, our fishing dock is done. So one, two there and one, two fishermen. Reserve of logs is low, I get it. That house is done, so that builder can become a fisherman. And actually, as soon as we get another spare laborer, uh, they can become our fourth fisherman. And this little fishing area will be done. And so now this little area is, is extremely efficient. So the fishermen 
just bring the stuff of the fish next door when they're done walking out. The vendor will then grab the uh, fish from the storage bar and bring it to here. And because these houses are within the radius of the market, our fishermen are not going to be so dumb as to just go to the fishing bar, the storage bar, and eat nothing but fish and get really, really sick. Um, they're actually going to take the time to travel down to the market and get a nice wide variety of foods. So it works out for everybody in that way. All right, we are pretty close to 700 here, which means... Well, actually, since, uh, yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you to put in, that way it's right there sitting in the trade depot, and we can start building up our uh, lumber uh, one, even again, all, all over again. All right, labor in place, fourth fisherman, fishing hub done. And just in time, here's our first trading boat. And what do we get? Walnut seeds. See? Ooh, and we have food here. Now, granted, fish, and we're pulling that up. But here's another, here's another little trick that I like, another little trade good that I like. Venison. Here's the reason. Well, first off, let's see how much spare venison. We have a, we have a thousand spare venison. We can spare the venison. Um, Venison is worth three trading value per, whereas egg or fish only costs one per. So we can triple our food by trading it for fish. And even eggs here. I'm willing to trade the venison for eggs because we get a one, uh, a one point cost upgrade and a little bit more food diversity. So it is going to be in my best interest here to grab 1,000 venison. We're going to want to turn that back off once we've traded it, uh, or traded part of it. But first we want to make sure they get the firewood in place. So our trader is going to be pretty busy. But he should be in here. See, trade value three. Now, like I said, not everybody accepts uh, venison, but uh, these guys do. So. Like I said, this actually concludes my uh, my strategy and tactics series on the Crossroads build. Having received my first trader, now what you what I do next may uh, be very different from what you do next after this. But we have ourselves a very very nice stable community. We can make ourselves hides. We can make ourselves tools. We've got a steady stream of educated children coming in place. We've got plenty of food and leather coming in. We've got another source of food up here. And now you know how to keep up with your housing is build a building or when you build a new workplace, build the houses um, for the people you're going to employ there first and any other support structures like storage barns and roads and then build the structure, use them as builders and then finally employ them there. So I hope you've enjoyed my strategy and tactics series. What I'm probably going to do is, uh, just because I like this town so much and because I like this map so much, is I'm going to continue this series, but it's going to be more of a, uh, just a let's play. Uh, I'm not going to be recommending a specific build order, but I am just going to be going through and building up Ficklewood here and just sort of giving you insight as to why I'm building what and where. Uh, so you might have some more mid and end game uh, strategies in mind. So. Until next time, um, like, subscribe, leave me comments. I definitely like comments. I definitely like uh, debating uh, strategy in the comments. And, and like I said, any uh, criticisms or critiques of my techniques here are more than welcome. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at, at Pinstar. So until next time, I'll see you guys next time. Pinstar out.